I deleted a YouTube video with over 24 million views. Today I'm going to explain why and also go over why deleting your videos, sometimes even your most popular ones, can actually result in you getting even more views. Now I know that sounds crazy, but here's the thing. So the other day I was procrastinating on YouTube while convincing myself that I wasn't procrastinating. So I was like scrolling through YouTube, but not actually clicking on anything. Anyway, all of a sudden this comment just came out of nowhere, cut through my haze of procrastination denial. And honestly, it's probably my favorite comment I've read this year because it shared a story that just perfectly explains how the YouTube algorithm works in a nutshell and how deleting some videos on your channel can actually help you get more views overall on all your other videos if you delete the right videos that is because one of my fellow YouTube growth internet-y people Ch nah, Nate from Channel Makers who uh, sadly doesn't respond to any of my emails posted on his community tab, effectively asking YouTubers to let him know basically the tips or tricks or things they've learned. And a man named George, <coughs> that's my white man brain kicking in. Uh, a man named Jorge Acosta shared a story of how he deleted the most popular video on his channel with over 24 million views and how ironically it actually helped him get a lot more views because exactly what Jorge lays out in this comment is actually something I've done on this channel and it's crazy, deleted, I think over 600,000 views in one go from this channel. And it actually helped me get even more views than that. So let's get into this. So the comment reads, I deleted a video with over 24 million views. Had a short gone viral. It brought me several thousand new subscribers, but I had to take it down. It was killing my channel. Let me explain. Now, essentially, Jorge then goes on to explain uh, that the short captured the story of him discovering a large mouth bass, which is a fish for those of you who don't go outside uh, floating in uh, a waterway and the bass had another fish stuck in its mouth so it was kind of just floating around helplessly because it couldn't get it unstuck and Jorge basically rescued both of the fish because the fish that was in the bass's mouth was actually still alive as well somehow so he rescued both of the fish released them and they both swam away to live lives happily ever after aside from a severe case of chronic lockjaw i'm sure for the bass and as jorge says in his comment the short connected very well with people that love animal rescue type videos the problem is jorge's channel is about fishing sports fishing specifically and even though he releases most of his catches Obviously, the rest of the content doesn't really resonate very well with the kind of audience that that short was bringing in. Jorge noticed that that particular video is bringing in about 90% of the views for his entire channel every single day. And so it seemed like the YouTube algorithm was starting to identify that Jorge's audience was people who liked animal rescue videos, not people who are interested in fishing. And this is an extreme case, but this is something that so many YouTubers struggle with. It's because the algorithm relies very heavily on a concept called collaborative filtering. If you can understand this, you'll be ahead of so many people and you'll be able to kind of reverse engineer how to get the algorithm to grow your channel. So to your great privilege, I did some most excellent drawing uh, before this. Uh, these are stick figures people in case you couldn't tell for, for some reason in case you're not artistic Here comes the money. and these squares let's imagine they're videos now let's imagine that this green square here this is jorge's animal rescue video where he rescued said largemouth bass with chronic lockjaw and these videos these red videos red for evil carnivore people you're not allowed to eat meat what are you talking about? is that for the it's environment strange. um <laughs> Sorry. These are his regular sports fishing videos. Now what happened was this audience of people, this animal rescue audience, YouTube identified them as potentially being interested in Jorge's video here. And so what happened is YouTube promoted this video to that audience. What happened was it's a great video, really cool storyline, a really engaging video. And so those people, a lot of them clicked on that video. They watched it all the way to the end. They probably liked and commented. They maybe shared the video. In other words, they were highly satisfied by that video. And YouTube's like, wow, this is an amazing video. And so it continues to scale up that video, promote it to even more and more and more people. The video gets larger and larger until before you know it, it's got 24 million views. Now that's all well and good. 
The problem comes in when YouTube starts to do collaborative filtering. How collaborative filtering essentially works is that YouTube looks at viewers' previous watch history and figures out based on what they've watched previously, what videos they might be interested in in the future, and it sends them those videos. So in this case, what YouTube might do is it's like, hey, this animal rescue audience have been really highly satisfied by this animal rescue video from Jorge's channel. So let's try promote Jorge's other videos to this audience because maybe they'll resonate with his other videos as well. So what happens is YouTube goes ahead and it promotes the regular sports fishing videos content on Hawaii's channel to this audience. But what happens is this, this audience is not interested. They couldn't give a damn. And so they don't click, they don't watch, they don't engage. And that sends really bad signals to YouTube about that video. And so YouTube goes, okay, well maybe I'll try again. And so it tries to promote another one of Jorge's videos to this audience. But again, same problem. You're buying meat, you anti-vegan moron. Okay. I'll give you that. They're animal rescue people. They're not interested in sports fishing. So they don't click, they don't watch, they don't engage. And so what can happen now is kind of two things. Either YouTube can go and try and promote these sports fishing videos to other audiences and try to find a win with those other audiences. But at this point, you could kind of think about it like the algorithm's patience is starting to wear thin. It's already given you a couple of chances, at least it's, it thinks it's given you a couple of chances and the videos haven't done well. So unless you get pretty lucky and like the next few audiences YouTube experiments and promotes your videos to, they really strongly resonate and like just take off, chances are YouTube's gonna stop promoting these videos. It's gonna kill their reach. And if all of your videos are like these ones, so in, in, again, in Hawaii's case, all of his videos aside from this one short were pretty much about sports fishing, that means your entire channel suffers. Now there may come a day when YouTube's algorithm gets really smart and kind of avoids this problem, but for now, it's still not smart enough to figure out this kind of problem. If you're posting different videos that would attract a different type of audience, you're more than likely gonna run into this problem unless those videos have a very, very strong sort of through line that connects them all together. And this is why I'm such a big fan of picking a niche, especially if you're just a small YouTuber starting out, it sort of forces you to only create one type of content, meaning you don't run into this massive problem where YouTube promotes some of your videos to the wrong audience and other of your videos to the right audience. It just gets all confused and chances are it ends up just going, all right, this is all too hard. I can't figure out who these videos are meant to go to. No one's clicking on them. No one's watching them. And then it just kills them. And in this case, it was, it was very obvious. There's a very stark difference between sort of, you know, animal rescue lovers and sports fishing. But this can also happen with videos where there's a slightly less stark difference. And later in this video, I'll kind of share a test with you that you can use to figure out whether or not you might be having this sort of collaborative filtering problem. Because if you don't fix this problem, what happens is what happens to Jorge, which is, as he mentions here in his comment, he started to notice less and less views for his new fishing videos. And then he noticed that not only were they getting less views, but they started getting less impressions. And an impression is sort of measured when someone sees your video on YouTube. So they don't have to actually click on your video and give you a view to mark an impression. If they just see it, if it just pops up on their homepage, essentially meaning YouTube promoted that video to them, then you'll see it marked as an impression. And so what's essentially happening here, Jorge is saying that he's getting less impressions, meaning the algorithm is just promoting him to less and less people. Why? Because of what we talked about earlier, it starts to think that his other videos are just bad videos, when what was actually happening was that those videos were just being promoted to the wrong audience because the algorithm was all confused about his data. And as Jorge goes on to say, all the while he was putting out content that was exactly the same, like at least as good as his previous content. But as he goes to say later in this comment, his regular fishing videos used to get between 40 and 60K views in the first month. Now they were only getting like 20K views, which obviously is still a lot because he's still a big channel, but you can still have this exact same problem even on a much, much smaller scale. And so how I want you to fix this problem, there are some more advanced ways you can dive into, but the simplest kind of my go-to right off the bat way is to ask yourself the following question. Every time you create a video, ask yourself, would the kind of person who would be attracted to click on and watch this video, would that person also want to click on and watch all of the other videos on my channel? In Jorge's case, would animal rescue type lovers want to click on and watch all of my other sports fishing videos? Chances are, no, that's an obvious one. 
Thank you, Captain Obvious. But this can also happen on a much more subtle level. For example, with my own channel, I mentioned I deleted over 600,000 views from this channel you're watching right now, purely because it was bringing in the wrong audience. Essentially, a while back, I created a video on how to live stream on your PlayStation 5 and your Xbox. And you might think that's a good idea. Like there are a lot of YouTubers who live stream on their PlayStation 5s and on their Xboxes. But here's the problem, not every YouTuber is a streamer. Not every streamer is a YouTuber. So would every viewer of my how to live stream videos be interested in all my other how to get views on your YouTube videos? No, there's a percentage of them, we don't know how big that percentage is, who would not give a crap about all of my other videos. And that was enough for me to delete those videos from this channel even though they had hundreds of thousands of views. Now, was that the best decision for this channel? In my opinion, based on the stats I've seen in the beginning, obviously there's a drop because those videos used to generate very consistent and lots of views on a regular basis. But eventually, as I put out more of the right type of content, those views went back up and I think they're now at heights that they wouldn't have been at if I hadn't have deleted those other videos. And Jorge found a similar thing. For him, he said that he took his short down about two months prior to posting this comment, and slowly but steadily, he's been seeing a better performance in his videos. But what if your channel is currently so small that the amount of views coming in from your videos, even if they are unrelated, is not enough that it's actually gonna confuse the algorithm. So in Jorge's case, again, he was getting 90% of his views on this one short, which completely skewed his entire channel. On mine, I wasn't getting 90% of my views, but you know, I was getting you know, 600,000 views is still a significant amount, enough to significantly warp the perspective of my channel. But what if you're a very small channel and you're not getting thousands of views on your videos? Well, I still think you should pick a specific niche and stick to it, because even in small quantities, collaborative filtering is how the algorithm works. But beyond that, you wanna start getting more views on your videos overall. And if you want help with that, there's a video on the screen. I'm gonna go over a very specific and practical tutorial on how to make the algorithm love your YouTube channel.